Now from the moments before the Miami-Iowa kickoff, here is Jack Aroot. Keith in the locker room for the Miami team, it was uncharacteristically silent. Dennis Erickson stood up and he said, you are absolutely playing, not for yourselves, but for Southern Florida. And because of that, you're playing the biggest game of your career. He said, whatever example we set tonight will be what Southern Florida will follow. So let's make sure that they're a winner. Then Michael Barrow stood up and said, there's no tomorrow. Let's make sure we're winners. Iowa will get the football team underway on the offensive side with Danon Hughes and Harold Jasper waiting to receive the kickoff from Dane Pruitt. Dane Pruitt, of course, new to the job as place kicker because Carlos Huerta held that position with the Miami Hurricanes throughout his four-year career. Hughes and Jasper are standing at the five-yard line. They play on real grass here in Iowa City. And the game is on. The fourth meeting between these two teams. It goes to Hughes at the four. A hole gets him out to about the 24-yard line, and there Iowa will go to work. And uh, at quarterback for the Iowa Hawkeyes will be the senior, Jim Hartley, 6'2", 210-pounder from Woodstock, Illinois. And lining up behind him will be number 33, Marvin Lampkin at the deep back and Lou Montgomery at the fullback position with Dana Hughes at a wing back. And he is a very dangerous member of the offensive unit. Alan Cross is the big tight end. The front for the Iowa Hawkeyes, big enough. Not the biggest in the land, but big enough. Their question tonight hanging over them is whether or not they can handle the speed of the attackers from Miami. They did not against North Carolina State. Out of the shotgun, immediately going to something new. Ball is handed off to Montgomery, the fullback. So Hayden Pryor remains Hayden Pryor. He starts with something you might not have accepted. But working from the shotgun will give perhaps Hartley some relief from this group of defenders for Miami, led by Rustin Medeiros, one of the top defensive ends in the country. The linebackers are all terrific. They can run. Smith is the slowest, and he's a mere 4'6". The secondary, Ryan McNeil, is the leader of that crowd. Some say the best corner in the country, if not the one of the best. No room for Ryan Terry as he moves around, and uh, the ball is kept by Hartley, thrown for Antilla. And uh, the pass is off his hands, incomplete. Dana Hughes, who works at the wingback spot, it starts to develop what looks like a wingback counter, and then Hughes lets it fly. Well, it was a reverse back to Hughes, and Hughes throws the ball. Hughes is a uh, minor league baseball player with the Milwaukee Brewers uh, franchise. Two, the first two plays out of the box for Iowa. Hayden Fry throws from the shotgun. Secondly, he comes out with a trick uh, trick play, which he told us he would have in the bag. Well, he's doing exactly what I asked him about yesterday, and he wouldn't admit it yesterday in our conversation that he would try to strike early, try to find something where he could hurt him before Miami got organized. This is Montgomery, the 210-pound fullback from Waterloo, and he moves the ball across the 30 to the 32, and that leaves him a couple of yards uh, short of the first down. The shovel pass forward to Montgomery. This is a whole new game plan that Iowa has in this week as opposed to last week. They do fail, however, to pick up their first down, and Scott Fisher comes in to punt. It's a low-line drive. It hits on the soft grass and will roll dead just inside the 30 and down at the 28-yard line of Miami. That will be a 40-yard punt. So Gino Toretta will come into the ball game now. He is the senior from Pinole, California, remarkably 15-1 as the starting quarterback. The offensive unit uh, in Toretta will be directing for the first time this season. Features starting at what will be a tailback position, perhaps, but he is not a true tailback. Kevin Williams is a little bit of everything, but primarily a wide receiver. Barber, Rudy Barber, is the only starter showing up tonight along the offensive front for the Miami Hurricanes. The other people are hurt. There's Kevin Williams, who moved from the listed tailback position out to the wide spot, takes the ball, coming across the middle. But he is a fine running back, and if you get him the ball in traffic, he can make things happen. The defensive unit for the Iowa Hawkeyes 
Mike Wells is the ringleader of that bunch, and they're pretty good. They're going to have to be tonight. Mike Bailey and Teddy Joe Bailey need to have a better ball game, too, than they had last week. The secondary people have a little better than average speed, but uh, you don't want to get into a foot race with Miami. There is good pressure from the front by the Iowa Hawkeyes and Larry Jones carrying out of the fullback or tailback or the solo back position, however you want to call it, is smothered by the Iowa defense, led by number 64, Mike Wells. He's a 280-pound junior from Arnold, Missouri. Keith, there's no doubt that Iowa was embarrassed by the way they played last week. They were playing on artificial surface. surface. They are not the fastest team around. They feel much more comfortable on grass and at home. You'll see a big improvement out of this team here tonight. It is third down and five for Miami. Nobody behind Toretta. Let's it go. Williams on the run. Over his head incomplete. But you know what he showed? He showed he could outrun the Iowa defender. He is the fastest man on the Hurricane team, and Toretta likes to throw deep. That just sends a message for the rest of the evening. The Iowa defensive secondary better play the entire field. Paul Snyder, a senior, is in for his first punt. And Harold Jesper goes back for the Hawkeyes. A little pressure there. The kick, however, is a beauty. Jasper all the way to the 11, back to the 15, and down there. 56 yard punt, four yards return, 12 or one to go, first quarter. And Hayden Fry have come out firing. They tried to block the punt. He has uh, ran a uh, reverse pass on the first three plays, a shotgun the first play out of the box. He is holding nothing back here this evening. Now let's see if he goes into the attack mode of counting on him. He's trying to use the big offensive unit and gain with it. He didn't get anything there. Here's Johnson. Thanks, Keith. USC and San Diego State, 31-31 tie. Andy Trackus misses the 55-yard field goal. He also missed from 30 yards earlier, and it winds up tied. Back to Keith Jackson. Second down and 10 for the Iowa Hawkeyes at their own 15. Coming wide, Antilla. Tight end standing up, give them the appearance of trips at the top of the picture, but number 71 comes blowing in. That's Kenny Lopez, and he decks Marvin Lampkin for a loss on the play. The strengths of these teams, Iowa offensively is their experience. Ten of the 11 starters on offense, fifth-year seniors. And for Miami, their team speed and quickness. What Hayden Fry has done in the early part has used that speed and quickness against Miami. Misdirection, the reverse play. He had his man wide open, just didn't hit him. Third down and 12 as a result of Lopez's fine defensive play. Out of the shotgun. Leave, standing on his four, throws it underneath the left. He is slowed by one man and then brought down. Jesse Armstead, a senior from Dallas, Texas, was the first man to get a piece of him. Now the Iowa Hawkeyes will have to punt it away on fourth down. Ten minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter of play. And the Hawkeyes, who tried to open big, now are turned away by the Miami defense. This is Scott Fisher to punt. And the man back to take it is Kevin Williams. He'll have no chance to return it. It's a relatively ordinary putt. It's just short of midfield and backs up, leaving it around the Iowa 48 yard line. So Dennis Erickson, who has had a remarkable record during his short time at the University of Miami, but uh, he will go, like some of the others, back home to a place without a home. It was shattered in the hurricane. His home was severely damaged in the hurricane, but as he mentioned during the week, not nearly as bad as some of the other people in South Florida. They have put the football at the Iowa 45. It is first down in Miami with three wideouts to the bottom. Nobody in the backfield behind Coretta. They make you play the whole football field. Spreads you out. Coretta pulls it down and takes off. 
And he's down to the 40. That's a pickup of about five before Brett Bielema brings him down for the Hawks. Texas A&M with that swarming defense opened against Stanford. They've been their second of the day. Figured to be one of the better teams in the country. Penn State, Cincinnati scored halftime. It's a surprise to me. Lamar Thomas checks into the ball game. Lamar Thomas, who has been in the center of a whirlwind over and beyond Andrew recently, came in last night. He's in uniform, and uh, the ball is whipped across to Horace Copeland. Lanky senior from Orlando who makes the catch and it appears he may well have a first down. There is Lamar Thomas who is a real flyer. Led the team in receiving last year. A big play receiver. Of course the Hurricanes have two or three different ones. Thomas can break it. Copeland and uh, Kevin Williams. We will discuss later in the ball game with athletic director Dave Maggot the circumstances involving Lamar Thomas. They are a little complicated. He's out of there now. Miami has the first down at the 35 of Iowa. Uh-oh. Right tackle moved for Miami. Kim Vickers got one ahead of the snap. Big senior from Holiday. And that'll back him up five. This is what Bob was talking about, I think, at the very beginning when he alluded to the fact that they may be out of sync a little bit, especially in the early going because of a lack of practice. Dead ball. Ball start. On Not only did the Hurricanes miss a lot of practice, but Lamar Thomas, number 36, because of some problems that he had, missed about two and a half weeks. He did attend some meetings, but didn't practice with the team. Came up late last night, and because he's a fifth-year senior, knows the offense very well, and he did stay in shape. First down and 15. Loretta gets a little heat, pass as whistled to the 30, and the pass is caught by Coleman Bell. Remember Coleman Bell? He was the man that made that huge catch for Miami in the winning drive against Florida State last year. To go further on this Lamar Thomas story, he had been indicted in Miami for having received some monies allegedly illegally through the Pell Grant system. It's a bit of a complicated story. But he and Maruuchi both are here tonight, having been given a reprieve. It is second down and four. Beretta very quickly. Williams loses, almost intercepted, incomplete. Here's John. Early surprise, if only because last year was 81 to nothing Penn State. But here, David Small, four-yard touchdown run. They're tied, Cincinnati and Penn State, at halftime. Back to Keith. Ball rest just inside the 29-yard line. It is third down and a long three. Loretta, three out of five for 24 yards so far. The home folks get into the ball game now with a little noise. Hawkeyes go after Toretta. The pass is thrown. Caught by Kevin Williams. Shakes a tackler. Gets away from Book. Inside the 10. Down just inside the 7. First and goal for Miami. Well, Iowa's coming after him. The linebackers here and here are going to blitz. Here's Williams. He just goes down and break to the outside. And his ability to run after he catches the football. Blitz. Man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. A good throw by Toretta. And Williams is one of the most dangerous receivers and return people in the country. As he said, I can do it all. Just give it to me. First down and goal for Miami. First threat by either team in the ball game. Toretta rolls it out. Looks into the end zone. Nobody there. Now he throws. Pass is caught by Coleman Bell. And he's knocked out just short. Just short of the goal line. So just before he crossed the line of scrimmage, Toretta dumped it to his tight end. Bell was very alert, uh, that play, Keith. Toretta just, just making something out of nothing. The receivers were covered. Iowa doing a great job in the end zone. Blue just barely gets the sack. And then Toretta makes something out of nothing and gets it down inside the one-yard line. Second down and goal. Larry Jones behind Toretta. Jones. Touchdown. Penalty flag. Hold it. 
Looks to me like, uh, Keith, the man in motion may have been moving toward the line of scrimmage. Jim Kimberling, Big Ten, is the referee. Mixed crew. Illegal procedure. Motion, and you're right. Ball will come back five. So Miami's first touchdown wiped out by penalty. Again, Keith, the fact that they did miss some time practicing, I think, has another effect. Takes a touchdown away from them. Not lining up properly. Motion going across the line of scrimmage. Hayden's looking at his next offensive series. Ball just outside the five, where it's second down and goal Miami. play if you can see watch his left arm if you can see it from here saw his elbow come back he's trying to give a uh, some kind of signal to one of the wide receivers but a sharp movement by the quarterback when you're at the line of scrimmage is is a flag you cannot do that third penalty against the hurricanes and the ball now is just outside the 10 on second down and goal receiver Thomas just slants inside that's James number five that's right there to put the hit on him and this Iowa Hawkeye team is getting fired up with each play when they turn the Hurricanes away from that goal line the young kicker Dane Pruitt loosening up it is third down this is the ninth play in this possession for Miami Loretta's pass to the end zone. It is incomplete. Intended for Coleman Bell and Tyron Boudreaux, a linebacker, went back and kicked him away from the ball. There's a look at Bell. He's just going to go straight up the field. He's working on the linebacker. But Boudreaux is using the end zone for... for uh, for to help him, but he may have interfered with him, uh, Keith. He hit him a little bit soon, as far as I was concerned. 27-yard try by Dane Pruitt. Pops it up and knocks it downtown. So it's 7 9 to go in the first quarter. The Miami Hurricanes go to the lead 3 to nothing in Iowa City. The Miami Hurricanes leading 3 to nothing at 7 9 to go in the first quarter. We'll kick it off. And the same people are back for the Iowa Hawkeyes, Damon Hughes and Harold Jasper. Hughes, 6'2", 202, an outstanding athlete. Pruitt, who has come to Miami, he is actually a redshirt freshman, but the thing that's entertaining about it, he is from Birmingham, Alabama. year quarterback there as a junior the nice toss here to Duquesne McCorvey and a touchdown they lead 24 7 at halftime Keith. next week Florida State gets a little better taste of ACC they go to Death Valley <laughs> and see Clemson but Clemson struggled today against a good ball state team 35 yard line first down for Iowa three nothing Miami it's Montgomery the single back behind Hartlieb to Ryan Terry. Terry working out of the backfield, stepping up into a slot back position. And he's picked up a first down for the Hawkeyes at the 47. 
Iowa in their first two possessions were three plays and out and a punt. Moving the pocket a little bit. Hayden Pride not giving up the, the Hurricanes a target. Terry, the backup running back, picks up their first first down of the ball game. To some degree, he's doing what uh, Dennis Erickson does with his uh, offense. He's moving that back up into a receiver position. And it worked that time. Hartley sees nobody available, pulls it down, takes off. And his legs are taken away. After about a six-yard pickup, here's Jackaroo. Keith, you know, Hayden Fry is well known for a lot of his impression of family traditions on his Iowa Hawkeye teams. You know, they've done the hokey pokey, they do the swarm when they come out. Well, it's been so impressive on this team that, believe it or not, 80 of the team members stayed here in Iowa City all summer to work out together. And they hope that it'll pay off dividends tonight. All right, Jack Paul Kiwaba. Kiwaba is in at uh, fullback replacing Montgomery. Hardly turns, hands the ball to Ryan Terry. And Terry, a big guy looking for a place to play. 205-pound sophomore from Steubenville, Ohio. Hammers in there and gets another Iowa first down. In the middle of that offensive line, the center is Devlin, number 60, preseason All-American, fifth-year senior, and the rest of them. Peroni is in there, Veliser is in there, 45 is Darren Smith. A good surge by that Iowa offensive line. Two back set now with Montgomery coming back to join Ryan Terry, who looks pretty good so far. Now they'll split it. You need to keep somebody back to help your quarterback. Hartley pulls it down. A lot of green grass. Goes to the 35. And he will pick up five. Hartley had eight rushes for six to six yards uh, last week. One of the, that total yardage was one run for 37 against North Carolina State. So he is a good run. He's a brother of Chuck. Chuck Hartley played with, uh, for Hayden Fry, was all Big Ten quarterback for a couple of years, and Jim Hartley is a fifth-year senior. Waited his turn, and this is his first year to start for the Hawkeyes. And younger brother John is a starting defensive end. So the Hart Leaves have written some rather strong language into Iowa football history, haven't they? Sure. Check it down in five. Time up. Wants to talk. Time remaining, first quarter, 4 4 9. Miami 3, Iowa nothing. Cross volunteers were at all the gates here at Iowa Stadium as the people came tonight hoping to collect the dollar average from each person, which would amount to some $70,000 because the Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund is desperately in need of money to help the people of South Florida. And nobody is more concerned about it than that young man right there. Nobody. All right, 449 to play in the first quarter. Miami leading 3 0 in Iowa now trying to mount a threat. Second down and five at the Miami 35. Hartley turns, hands inside. Ball rolling around. It came loose, and Miami has recovered it. Ryan Terry lost the football, and it looks like Caesar. Mark Caesar might have been the man to come up with it. The big guy from Newark, New Jersey. Take a look from behind the Miami defense. 99 is Caesar. That's Barrow, number 56, the inside linebacker. The ball there to the right. Looks like Caesar, number 99. He's wearing that number in honor of Jerome Brown. Jerome Brown was a former Hurricane, died recently as a member of the Philadelphia Eagles in a car accident. Donnell Bennett checks into the ball game for Miami for the first time. He is the single back. He has the ball, and he's hammered right along the line of scrimmage. The defense led by Brett Bielema. He got the first hit on him. Tomorrow here on ABC Sports, the PGA Tour. The Greater Milwaukee Open, 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific. And uh, the scoreboard at the conclusion of the third round of play today read Mark Brooks on top. It'll be presented by Sharks tomorrow here on ABC Sports. Attendance in this ball game tonight, 70,397 as Toretta fires a bullet caught by Copeland and it's first down Miami at the 45. 
The crowd, incidentally, tonight, Bob, is a new record at 70,397. The old Kinnick Stadium record being 70,389. That was set in 1990 when the Iowa State Cyclones came calling. Well, let's hope that they all put a dollar in the bucket and help not only the, the people that were uh, injured in, in uh, South Florida, but also the people in Louisiana that were injured by the storm last Dis week. Displaced, my goodness. Back goes Toretta, lets it go, Kevin Williams, and it's way, way beyond the reach of anybody. Racing downfield also was Jonathan Harris, and uh, Gino just let it fly, and I don't think anybody had a chance at it. <laughs> Williams, Williams stopped running at about 15 yards. He says, I, I haven't got my man beat, and Gino threw the ball about 20 yards downfield. I can't reach it, so I'm going to save my breath. Second down and 10 now. The ball is just short of the 45 on the Miami side of the field. Reels it in, and it's down at the Iowa 40, and it's a first down. Copeland is an outstanding athlete, Keith. He an uh, All-American track player at the uh, Big East Conference Outdoor Championship. He won, he set a record for the long jump, won the 100-meter dash, won the high jump, and anchored the 4 by 100 relay team. He's oh. caught three balls tonight for 34 yards. He could have won that track meet by himself. Yes, <laughs> Well, they've kept me. He, he is a, one of the prime reasons. I think they've kept the track program alive. So, fumbles the snap, dives on it, and covers it himself. Gino is not a gimme when it comes into that quarterback job physically. He's 6'3". He weighs 205 pounds, and uh, he has an aggressive mentality. He, he's not easy to handle. Ball was up there. Gino may have pulled out a little too soon. Toretta on the ball. Move it back to the 43. One turnover, Iowa with a fumble that gave Miami the possession. Second down and 13. Sideline to Lamar Thomas. Thomas catches the ball, but he is well defended on that side of the field by Scott Plate. And Bo Porter is down and hurt. So Thomas is down for the moment. While we've got time out on the field, let's check in with John Saunders again. Thank you, Keith. Syracuse in East Carolina. Syracuse looking for revenge and the missile of Kadri Ismail. Goes the distance here, 64 yards for the touchdown. Ismail, of course, is the brother of the rocket, and the missile has him on top, 21 nothing. Let's go back to Keith. And we're going to see them next week, as uh, at least Bob and I will, as they meet the Texas Longhorns in the Dome. At the conclusion of the game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player from each team for the 22nd year through the Chevrolet scholarship program. $1,000 will be donated to the general scholarship fund of each school. There's Lamar Thomas walking off the field very gingerly. It looked as though he may have injured this, his knee on this play. Well, he has not in, been involved, has he, with any hard hitting. He hasn't. He hasn't been practicing. No. It looks like plate number six may have rolled over on his lower leg. We mentioned he just joined the team last night. He didn't fly up with the team yesterday afternoon. Came up last night. Has not practiced in over a week. Right now it's third down and five for the Canes. Iowa shows blitz. The backer backs out. The ball is deflected at the line. Jeff Nelson, number 93. Fourth down. But Bill Brazier, the defensive coordinator for the Hawkeyes, said he wants to mix it up on Toretta. He wants to rush him some and then drop back some. First kick was 56 yards, is now onto the field to punt it for Miami. 
to play in the first half and Miami Legion three to nothing. Here's Jack. Keith, I checked with Dr. John Uribe, the orthopedic surgeon for the Miami team, and he says Lamar Thomas is showing a twisted knee, but he says I can't see anything really major wrong with him. He says he may be a little timid because he hasn't worked out. He says right now the kid's just a little scared. Yeah, those uh, hard hats make a large pumping sound when you are not used to them. <laughs> sure do. Sometimes uh, those preliminary examinations, uh, you really don't know anything until the next day. Hartley back. Let's it go. Pass is taken by Kuyama. There's a penalty flag across the field. So before we give you the numbers on that play, let's check with Jim Kimmerling. And while they're deciding that, here are the officials. The referee is Jim Kimmerling from the Big Ten. Umpire Don Serra from the Big East. It's a mixed crew. Head linesman Stephen Payman. Line judge Jerry Height. Field judge Terry Anderson. Side judge George Cullen. And the back judge is Mike Nevis. Illegal formation. Six men on the line. On the offense. Still first down. Well, that was called against Miami earlier. You might expect it from the Canes since they've been shortened because of circumstances in practice and disrupted from their home. But uh, Iowa had it called on them last week and they get it dinged again this week. You've got to have seven people on the line of screen. Toretta getting a little uh, ankle job there over his uh, shoe. They normally tape their ankles for each game. This is much Jesse Armstead uh, is the man flagged for decking Hartley, the Iowa quarterback. Personal foul on the defense. Well, Montgomery Personal. is the fullback. What an outstanding player. Now Armstead, top left, bangs into the quarterback. The ball is gone. Watch this move right here. He jumps over the defensive man, but Armstead, take a look at this jump. Watch this athletic move by a fullback, six foot, 210 pounds. One of the top fullbacks in the Big Ten. No excuse for Armstead plowing into Hartley. The penalty puts the football out at the 42-yard line. First down for the Hawkeyes. Here they come. Uh, looks like uh, number 45, Darren Smith, is in the neutral zone, but I guess he got back because I don't see a flag. And there's a pickup on the play. Uh, Maybe lost a yard. Darren Krein put the hit on Montgomery. Krein is a junior from Aurora, Colorado. Sonny Lubick, defensive corner. Here's your free safety. Whenever the free safety moves up that far, you know that the linebackers are going to blitz. The free safety's up there to cover the back out of the backfield. And if he moves up that tight, if you're a quarterback, you better know when something's coming. Shotgun on second down. Casey Greer, the strong safety, came in a hurry to bring down the Iowa quarterback. Shotgun didn't show this last week. It's a quarterback draw. The lineman knew it was coming. Hartlett gets upfield. This is third carry, 20 yards on the evening. It is third down and a long two. About two and a half. It ricocheted into the arms of the Miami man. The Iowa receiver fell down, lost his footing, and so it is fourth down. Well, he fell down, Keith, because the ball was so far thrown behind him, he tried to get back for it, but he was open. He may have not have been, been where he should have been. He was much further to the inside, and Hartlib was throwing the ball outside. 
Here's trouble right here, mm, Mr. Williams. Young man from Texas. Kick is away. Right to him at the 15. Fair catch. Three black shirts back there looking into the eye. 35 yard punt. No return. And you got one tick remaining on the first quarter clock. There was a serious threat of rain middle of the afternoon. In fact, the game down at Ames today was, I understand, interrupted because of a fierce thunderstorm. But we have a lovely evening in Iowa City tonight at Kinnick Stadium. It is stuck. New record crowd of 70,397. This will be the final play of the first period. Beretta whips it, get to the 20. And uh, A.C. Tellison, who will become more involved with the Miami offense now that Lamar Thomas is injured, he's 6'4", 205 pounds, sophomore. I think Miami lead as we go to the second quarter of play. Kinnick Stadium, Iowa City, University of Iowa, home stadium. The visitors with second down and about a yard and a half as we start this second quarter of play. Ball resting just short of the 25 yard line. They go for it on the ground and they do not get it. There will be a loss on the play of a half a yard as Larry Jones is smothered. Maria Crane led the defensive surge. Take a look at the surge by the Hawkeyes. If the Hurricanes have a problem, it's in their offensive line. They've got a lot of young guys starting there, and the Hawkeyes take advantage. They led the Big Ten in sacks last year with 61. Lamar Thomas is back. He wasn't hurt too badly, was he? It is third down and two. Penalty flag comes out of the referee's pocket. Jim Kimberly. It's against Miami, so that'll make it third and seven. What I said at the opening, Keith, emotionally, they're ready to play. They need to play. It's healthy for them. Physically, they're going to have some problems. They're going to misfire. Their timing is not going to be there. And Iowa is going to play much better. And that's why Dennis Erickson is looking like he is, because he knows he's got a problem, and he knew it. He said they weren't ready to play. Lamar Thomas checks out. Tellison comes in. For the Hurricanes, third and seven. Ball is on the 19. Toretta down the sideline. Hits Copeland with it. Copeland has two men to deal with. And they wrestle him down at about the 40-yard line, but it's enough for a first down. He is a dynamite receiver, isn't he? Talking about Copeland and all that he has done in that track meet up there. They said, since you won the 100 and you won the long jump, you won the high jump, and you also anchored that relay team. What about the decathlete? He says, I can't do it. He says, I'm afraid of heights. The pole vault will get me. <laughs> Kansas looking pretty good. 10 out of 16, 118 yards for Toretta so far in the ball game. Gino throws hard. And Copeland takes the X and makes the catch. That looks like another first down. It is. Did you throw the ball that hard? Did you mark up your receivers? I, I'd love to have thrown the ball that hard. <laughs> First down for the Canes on the Iowa side of the field now. Just short of the 49-yard line. They lead three to nothing. And this is Larry Jones. Jones was the MVP in the bowl game uh, last year, but He's been pretty well handled so far. Mike Daly on the tackle. So look at what happened in the first quarter. Take a look at the total yards. 98 for Miami. 97 of them through the air. And for Iowa, they got a pretty good balance. 42 rushing and 25 passing. The one turnover in the first quarter, the Iowa fumble. It does not appear that the run is going to be much of a factor in this ballgame. Whatever happens offensively for them uh, is going to start with a pass. And the Iowa man, 
and the uh, Miami man over on the left side of the line stood up. Iowa man stepped in. It was Kip Vickers, the tackle, who stood up. to the second quarter. You mentioned, Keith, about they're going to be able to throw better than they're going to be able to run. It's much easier to pass block at this point of the season, especially when you've missed some time, than it is to run block and get the timing and the coordination of everybody at the same time. Make it second down and 14. Put the football just on the uh, Miami side at the 47-yard line. Loretta with a deep drop, got some heat, gets it away downfield. Scott Clay tries to intercept it, and Loretta is hammered. And I mean, he is flattened by Big Mike Wells. Take a look at the protection. Watch from the left side. 64 is Wells. All Big Ten second team last year. 12 sacks, almost had 12 sacks last year, almost had his first one for 1992. When a quarterback shoulder blades hit the ground and he bounces, he has been deflated, hasn't he? But as we said, Toretta is a big, tough guy. And he'll take a lot of punishment. So it's third down and 14. Steps away from the outside pressure and throws over the hand number three, Jonathan Harris, the sophomore from Houston, Texas, and the home folks like it. The Iowa defense holds them, and they'll have to punt. Paul Snyder, as uh, Harold Jasper goes deep, Paul Snyder is a senior from Laguna Niguel, California. It's a high hanger away, and Jasper comes way upfield to make the catch as a penalty flag thrown back around the 25. 23 yards on the punt. And it could be against Miami for uh, some interference. You have to give the man the opportunity, and uh, the people going down under the kick did not know where the ball was. Interference with the opportunity. Five-yard penalty. It is a spot foul. Penalty is declined. They don't want to go back to where the interference uh, happened because they're better off taking the ball where it is. First down on their 30. Evening in Iowa City last night on the walking street. The band was out having themselves a bit of a toot and having a very good time. It's been a most pleasant weekend at the home of the Hawkeyes. And... The home crowd enjoying it right now. Their defense has held. It's first down Iowa, their own 30-yard line. I Miami leads three to nothing, and this play is going nowhere. Lou Montgomery is just smothered by the Miami defense, led by Rustin Medeiros. Medeiros coming out of Ozark, Missouri, finding his way to Miami. They didn't find his way. They came and got it. <laughs> He's terrific. Greg Mark, who played that defensive end position in the... He's back as a graduate assistant coach on the Miami staff. He was also a great defensive player for the Canes. Medeiros grew up on a ranch back in Missouri. Mark Leach passes away. Down the middle, it is caught. Pass good to Damon Hughes, and it's a first down for the Hawkeyes. And let's check in with John. Penn State and Cincinnati, Richie Anderson takes the pitch here, then weaves his way towards the sideline and into the end zone, 11 yards. Penn State takes the lead, 14-7. Keith. A lot of those guys that got pummeled last year have showed up belligerent this year, haven't they? <laughs> got long memories, don't they? Yes, sir. Ball is at the 47, first down. Number 33, 202-pound senior from East St. Louis. And right now, let's pause five seconds so our ABC stations can tell you who they are. 
WFTV, Channel 9, Orlando. Thank you. It is second down and seven. The ball at midfield. Miami leading Iowa 3 nothing. It's been a pretty good football game. Little nagging mistakes has stopped Miami's momentum. A couple of times they've been in position to put some points up. They haven't been able to do it. Hart leaves pass. Thrown to Scooter Lampkin out of the backfield. And a sure-handed tackle by Terrace Harris, the junior from Memphis for the Canes. Terry Harris defending for the Hurricanes. Make it third and four now for the Hawkeyes. Antela comes off the field. There's a receiver right here. He's going to break to the outside. The linebackers were blitzing. Hartlip saw it, rolled a little bit to his right, away from the blitzing linebacker, knew he couldn't block the guy to his left, and got the ball away in a nice open field tackle. Now Scooter Lampkin moves up into a slot, becomes a wide receiver. There's three of them on the line for the Hawkeyes. Jasper looking in to see if he can recheck the snap count. Back goes Hartley. Needs to hurry, getting some heat. And going the other way, the ball came out. Somebody slapped it loose. So what looked like an opportunity to run for the first down blows up in the arms of Hartley. And the Hurricanes come away with the football. Kevin Patrick covering it for the Canes. The ball rests at the Iowa 49. Getting to know you. I drove literally every car in the same class. It boiled down to, I wanted a Geostorm. Guys like a girl that knows how to drive a stick. There's 140 horses in here. Can you, hello, horses. The cockpit's laid out like a jet. You don't have to be a race car driver to drive a storm, but you sure feel like one. Getting to know you. If this car had wings, it would fly. Now's the time to get to know Geo Storm right around the corner at your Chevrolet Geo dealers. Hi. You know why Quaker State asked me to be their spokesman? Because I'm tough. Quaker State is tough. Tough on wear and tough on sludge. If you use Quaker State in your new car's engine, they'll guarantee it for 250,000 miles or 10 years in writing. Quaker State is one tough motor oil. So, naturally, they ask me because I'm tough. You don't think it's because they think I'm oily. <sighs> ben and Connie Studebaker look at things differently since they became parents. I'm Roger Cruel. I'm their state farm agent. Having a family brought a lot of changes in their lives, so we thought it was a good idea to sit down and have a family insurance checkup. We started by adding to their life insurance protection. Then we went over all their family insurance to help make sure their coverage was up to date. After all, you never know what could happen. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. One of the most recognizable features of the Iowa campus, the Hancher Auditorium. Seats 2,600 plus, over a million people have been to performances in this famous building. Campus. Take a look at this last play. He still has the ball. Hartlett, it appears right there. His old man knocks the ball out and knocks it back to 86 Patrick, who was on the ground. And the Canes will take the look what I found fumble. Toretta comes up with 11 of 19 so far in the game. 129 yards and goes underneath to Kevin Williams. Tries to get him one-on-one. -on -one, does. And things happen when you get Williams one-on-one. -on -one. Down to the 15 to 14 yard. First down for the Canes before Scott Blake finally brought him down. This is why Williams is so dangerous and explosive. Top of your screen, just a little hitch, five yards. Now the action begins. See if you can tackle me. The fastest man on the team for the Hurricanes. Two guys miss, three miss, four, five, six. He's run three punts back for touchdowns last year. You just can't tackle him in the open field. First down. At the 15 yard line, Toretta turns and hands the ball to Donnell Bennett. And he'll make four yards. Miami's yardage, five yards on the ground, five, 164 through the air. Of course, that run by Williams, that, that goes as a pass. Yeah, it's almost a long handoff. That's right. <laughs> I mean, there were no backs in the backfield on that play. 
and they spread them from sideline to yep. sideline. Just spread them out, and then we'll go. We'll cut through you. Second down, long time. Checked off. Running back Bennett, trying to cut back to the left side, found a little crack over there and he couldn't get to it. Here's Jack. Keith, you know, they called Gino Toretta, Gino Marino, but that was last year. Now his teammates are calling him a new nickname that he got from his mother. It seems when he was a kid, he was the youngest of three brothers, Gary and Jeff are older than him, and he complained all the time. Like, the, the brothers, Jerry, Jeff and them said, why does Gino get all the preferential treatment? He says, well, because he's precious. Now the teammates call, Toretta, precious. Only when he's in a good mood. Third and six. Williams. Touchdown. Kevin Williams is 5'9", 185 pounds, and I think that might be a little heavy. He is a junior. He is from Dallas, Texas, and he is a bundle of dynamite. And he is explosive doesn't have to be explosive here the same play this side same time just gets down three or four yards now you can't tackle him plate again rides him into the end zone five step little hitch now plate's got to make the tackle and keep him out of the end zone and that oh, was Boudreaux's a linebacker and he can't help either Kevin Williams drive there yep kick is good ten to nothing Miami with 7.50 to go in the first half. Scoring drive for the Miami Hurricanes, and as Bob said, it was a Kevin Williams drive. He was clearing away the uh, dominant personality. And there you see him on the field again. He is on the kickoff team. Now, he is the safety. I said he is the fastest man on the Hurricane squad. He lays back, and if anybody breaks clear, it's his job to run him down. He said, I'm the marshal. Dane and Hughes and Harold Jasper are your deep people for Iowa. That'll be Hughes. Dane and Hughes runs the football across the 35 and up to the 37 next Saturday. Regional college football action on ABC Sports. In the east, Syracuse hosts Texas. Down south, Tennessee goes to Athens against Georgia. Out west, Oregon plays Stanford. Midwest, Missouri tackles Illinois, or Bowling Green travels to Ohio State. Check local listing for the game on your ABC station. Call your local cable operator to find out which of these regional games will be available on live pay-per-view. Starts at 3.30 Eastern Time on ABC Sports. First down from the 36. Hartley underneath. Pass is caught for the tight end. Cross. And he's ruled out of bounds by Jesse Armstead. Jesse Armstead is another Texan on the Miami team from Dallas. All three of those linebackers, Keith, for the Hurricanes run the 40-yard dash in under 4-6. And that is nothing Miami leading in the ball game at that, uh, seven and a half minutes. That's pretty ball. quick when you run, when your linebackers can run that fast. They can run down the wide receivers. in front of you when your uh, their linebackers can out on your backs. Terry carries. We zip off to New York and jump. And we have a tremendous run here as you look at Auburn and Ole Miss. Cassius Ware, 91 yards by the time he finally rumbles into the end zone on the interception for the touchdown as Ole Miss leads Auburn now 31-14. That's the key. Wow. That matchup has been that lopsided in favor of that team. Well, how do you do? Here comes Mr. Medeiros with his first big play of the night. Rusty Medeiros. He's 6'3", he's 255. And boy, I'd like to have him around if things get tough. 98, you see the tight end stands up. It's a blitz. 45 on the outside as a linebacker. The back didn't, didn't know who to block, whether to block Medeiros or the linebacker puts him to the outside. Medeiros got the sack. Made the wrong choice, obviously, didn't he? Take the inside of the two. Kevin Williams feels it. Back at the 22, a little pause, a little starter step. Then he is knocked back to the 25-yard line by uh, Bobby.
Bobby Diaco. 41 yard punt. Half time, credential half time report. Scores and highlights with John Saunders, Michael Barrow. Special feature on him and Bo Schembechler's game announced. Ball is at the 27 of Miami. They own it. First down. 6 24 to go. First down. For the University of Miami, Harris is only 5'9". That's James, number five. James is not doing anything wrong. You catch the ball, you got to wait. You got to expect to be tackled, even if you are only 5'9". That play is good for a first down. There was no penalty flag thrown. They got him apart in time, and uh, the rest of the Miami people behave themselves on the sideline. So it's at the 43. Jones is the single back. Oh, Larry might have gone the wrong way. That ball is deflected, intended for Coleman Bell, and it is no good. Doug Laufenberg got a hand on it for Iowa. But the way Toretta was behaving, it looked like that Jones might have gone the other way. He did way. go the wrong way. He was supposed to fake away and then come back to the tight end. Red has thrown 23 passes already, mainly in, the, in this game. We're about a quarter and a half into it, mainly because the running game is not working. They've had eight runs and 23 passes. Now they got him spread out all over the field. Sideline to sideline. Well, they give him too much room, but it's pretty good pursuit by the Hawkeyes. Number 97, Jason Dumont. He caught him from behind and held on. So it'll be third down and about seven. Both coaches in this game tonight, ex-quarterbacks, both coaches call a lot of the plays. Aiden Fry was a quarterback. In fact, he back in Odessa, he was a state uh, high school, all-state quarterback in high school. Loretta has time, lets it go, incomplete, intended for Horace Copeland. So the Kings get one first down, then they're stalled, and now they'll have to punt it away. They lead 10 to nothing. There goes Jasper back. He's a wide out. Here's your punter, Snyder. He's had some pressure on every kick them up there but this time there is no pressure and he gets away a very high good kick 15 yard line just for one to take it to the sideline no room for it it was a 39 yard punt two yard return here's John Florida State coach Bobby Bowden said Charlie Ward was scary in practice that's how good he was well now he's scary for the rest of the ACC. 67 yards to Matt Pryor. They lead 38 to 14 in their ACC debut. Keith. Hey, John. Bobby the preacher man. <laughs> He's got another bunch down there that can run and tackle and block and throw. First down for Iowa from the 17. Gets to it, can't throw it. He is collared literally by Jesse Armstead and taken down with authority. Well, Armstead has the speed that we mentioned earlier, and he ran down the quarterback. 
the right side of your screen, the linebacker behind the line. Watch him as Hartley is going to run the play action fake. Now watch uh, Armstead at the top middle. Now watch him running down. Loss of two yards on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Back on the 15. Legal tackle as long as you don't grab the face mask or the helmet. They try to run with Scooter Lemkin. Nothing to it. Darren Klein, 250 pounder, was waiting for him. Blue Jays had their troubles lately. Now they're trying to right things. In Oakland, they haven't won since Canseco left town. I don't think so. <laughs> what does that tell you? Mm. pretty good doesn't he now how about Hartley to get that ball off oh, <laughs> I mean, took some grit, I mean there was nobody blocking Armstead and he just stood in there waiting for some clearance and dropped the ball over a big first down for the Hawkeyes he backs He's back up there all by himself he sees him all the way <laughs> Ooh. He's seven out of eight in his passing but he's only picked up 69 yards Nothing big yet. On first down, out of the shotgun. Green, green to the tight end. Cross. And that's about a seven-yard pickup for Alan Cross, who's out of San Diego, California. And he was a walk-on. Yes, he was. Big walk-on program here. Hayden Fry always uh, welcomes walk-ons. Thirteen of them, as a matter of fact, on the ball club. It'll be second down and three for the Hawks now. At the 39-yard line, Montgomery and Terry are your backs. Behind Hartley. Knocks it. Knocks the, uh, the uh, Miami defender down and turns it upfield and will come up just short of the first down. So that's how strong Hartley is. But he's going to miss his first down by 10. Monday night, Labor Day night, the season premiere of ABC's NFL Monday Night Football. One of the old rivalries in the NFL. The Washington Redskins, the champions, will be in Texas against the Dallas Cowboys. Nine Eastern time here on ABC Sports. Well, they got everybody back, don't they? they uh... Yeah, but, you know, Rippon uh, only had two games in the preseason and did not look sharp in either one of them. Michael Irvin uh, back with the um, Cowboys. Checked in, yeah. I think they're missing their center, though. No, uh... Well, my name is claiming that somebody in wearing a black shirt moved. So let's see about it. I think the right tackle moved. is called against Miami. That's surprising. Top of your screen. The tackle moves. The uh, hurricane guy also moved and moved a few of the offensive linemen, I think. And the penalty goes against Miami. So it gives the Hawkeyes a first down. Hartley back pressure looping from the outside. Madaris passes away and it is incomplete. Montgomery being covered by Michael Barrow. Montgomery caught 35 passes last year. Barrow, the inside linebacker, was assigned to cover Montgomery. And Hartlib is really just running for his life literally on every uh, pass play.
six yard line, second down and ten. Barrow has made seven tackles so far in the ball game. Hart leads pass, Goodwin to the midfield, caught by the running back Terry. And Terry is thrown out at around the 48 yard line. And one more time we go to New York and go. Cincinnati's cry all season long will be remember 81 nothing after a blocked punt. David Small hauls in this for a touchdown, his second of the game. Cincinnati's down by only three in the fourth quarter. Keith. That's at Riverfront, right? Yeah. Looking for some redemption. Time out on the field for the moment. Miami uh, the moment, taking a deep breath, and here's your provincial halftime report. It's going to feature Michael Barrow, his family, and what happened in the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew. If you haven't been following and haven't heard Michael Barrow grew up in Homestead, Florida. That is exactly where the Hurricane Andrew went through. It's quite a nice piece. We also... Let's go down to Jackaroot. Well, Bob, you're absolutely right. In fact, he was the most valuable player for that team back in 1988. And he's wearing a very special jersey beneath his Miami jersey tonight. It's the Homestead, Florida football jersey. And he's wearing it to remind everybody that there is still so much to do down in southern Florida and in Louisiana. And he also wanted to let everybody know that football in high school is still going to get underway. You know a lot about that, Bob. <laughs> well, I think they're going to miss their first three ball games. But it's interesting to note that one of the Hurricane players, uh, Ina, Jay Ina, a freshman, went through the hurricane in Miami. And Andrew went all the way up and went to Louisiana, Franklin, Louisiana, where his parents live went through Franklin and also affected their home. Hartley again goes underneath to his tight end, Allen Cross, and Cross may have a first down. Time remaining, one, oh, three. Now he's going to be a yard short of his first down. Now we go inside a minute to go. And it's fourth down and a long yard. They'll go for it. Ball is at the 45 of Miami. Deep drop by Hartley. Bad pass by Hartley. He had a man wide open. Dana Hughes was lonely. It wasn't a hurricane within 10 yards of him. That was a very poor pass, and he knows it. Hayden Fry knows it. Take a look here. The receiver is going to go down and break into the middle. There is going to be nobody in the middle of the field. Drop back. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Receiver is there, and he throws it behind him. That's like a turnover. It was fourth down. Now you have to give the ball over to the Hurricanes in pretty good field position with 44 seconds remaining. They've got three. Ball and Copeland didn't catch it. You're right, Keith. It is a long way to throw it, but what you're doing, you're throwing the ball all the way out there to the corner of the field where there's only Copeland and maybe two defensive backs that he has to beat. You're throwing it away from the defense. You get it out there where one of your guys can maybe break some uh, tackles and make a long play out of it. But from that uh, near hash mark, to throw it that far is what a good 30 yards, isn't it? Good uh, 36 yards. Second and 10. Sideline. Williams falls down. Block keeps going now. They have three timeouts, and they'll spin one right here. So they'll stop the clock at uh, 29 seconds. They surely would like to get down, maybe give a chance to young Dane Pruitt to put something on the board. He's got one already. Talking with Dennis Erickson yesterday about uh, the storm and the aftermath of the hurricane, and I asked him if he had ever in any time considered forfeiting this ball game, and this was his answer. There were so many things involved that uh, we felt that we had to play the game, and, and now that we've done that, it's been very good for, for the therapy of our football team, and I think it's been very good. I, 
uh, for South Florida. I know that there are a lot of people that don't have houses that are trying to find places where they can watch this game on TV. That's, I mean, that's really amazing to me, but that's the kind of influence uh, our football program has on the city. Incidentally, Dennis' dad is an old friend of mine, Pinky, has a new hip. He's probably hustling uh, another four, four strokes aside. Let's look at Dennis Erickson and where he's been, Idaho. Wyoming, he was there for only one year. In Miami, the outstanding record, 33 and three, with two national championships over three years. With 29 ticks remaining, third down and three for the Canes. The ball is at the eye of a 48. Spread him out again. Probably deep here. Nope. Underneath, get your first down, get out of bounds. Coleman Bell, tight end. Top two clock, 24 seconds. Coming into the ball game, the offensive line for Miami was very young. They had lost two starters because of injuries. They have a freshman, a redshirt freshman, and two sophomores. Simonette there, number 66, is the redshirt freshman. This is his first game ever. And two sophomores on either side of him, but they're holding up well, mostly because he's throwing the ball pretty quickly. Gets it away to Harris. Harris is down inside the 15, stopped at the 11. That stops your clock as they move the change with 16 seconds remaining. Timeout, Miami. So they are now in field goal range. For Dane Pruitt, they have one timeout remaining. And uh, he's going to have to kick this one into a slight breeze if he gets to kick. Wednesday. I've got 500 watts running through this bad boy. Is it safe for us to be sitting here? Prepare yourself for a lovely Sunday afternoon at the Metropolitan Opera. Oh, that's wonderful, Cam. Turn it down. Stuck. Home improvement. Now on Wednesday, followed by Roseanne on a special night. The defending Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins face their arch rival, the Dallas Cowboys. It's the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football this week. If you're under the impression that Gino Toretta is having a big first half, you're correct. 17 of 28, 236 yards. But then he is, he is the opposite. Well, he is the man. He is the catalyst. He yeah. is the instigator. He gets it to these. Well, he gets it to um, the little guys that can run. Harris, most recently, Kevin Williams before those guys, both five nine. Then he throws it to Copeland, who's uh, six three. Just quick little passes, not asking his offensive line to do a lot. In fact, that time he had to move around a little bit to get rid of the football. It is first down at the 11 yard line of Iowa. Lamar Thomas checks in. Donnell Bennett is the single back. 16 seconds to go in the first half. One timeout remaining. Hard pass. Bounces off the chest. Uh, Copeland and Copeland uh, was well defended by Doug Book. Book doing a nice job. In fact, last week picked off a pass against NC State. Was the second leading tackler in that ball game and was up covering because the linebackers were blitzing. Toretta saw it, hit the man on a slant, and Book was right there to hit the slant receiver. 12 seconds to go, second down and 10. Let him spread out, sideline to sideline again. Toretta with time, throws it incomplete. That is deflected by Mike Bailey, a linebacker. Now it is third down and 10 from the 11 and eight seconds to play. You got time for one more play and then a kick. But with only eight seconds remaining, Bob, you got to put it in the end zone. Huh? You better throw it in the end zone because you can't rely on a pass play taking less than eight seconds and then calling a timeout. Gino does not roll out that often. He likes to stay in the pocket. Crowd trying to help their team. No 
He was intended for Kevin Williams. That's going to get Dane Pruitt into the ball game. Earlier, he kicked the 27-yard field goal. Now he's going to saddle up and try one from 28 yards. And it's going to come with three seconds to play in the first half. So the half is over. It's 10 nothing Miami. It is still a contest. And we'll be back with halftime activities after this message and the word from our ABC station. the second half of play as uh, the two teams have come up onto the field looking at how they got to their 10 to nothing score Dane Pruitt kicked a 27 yard field goal for a 3 nothing lead in this pass run play after a Jim Hartley fumble and Kevin Williams took off on the big run 35 yards it was a drive engineered almost totally by Kevin Williams after that play, he put it in the end zone from 11 yards out, again taking a short pass from Gino Toretta. And that's where we are in this ballgame. 10 to nothing, Miami. The numbers look this way with Bob. Here's a look at the halftime stats. Take a look at Miami passing, 236, only eight yards rushing. The other thing down here, two turnovers. One of those led to a touchdown. Iowa not getting a lot done offensively, but they're going up against Miami, who last year defensively was the number one unit in allowing the fewest points. Now here's Jack Aroop. Well, Keith, you saw the great feature about Michael and May Barrow's mother. I just talked to her at halftime. She's been watching the game where she's staying now, in Michael's apartment, just beyond the Miami arena. The one thing she wanted to tell people is she's been hooting and hollering with her family, but she wants everybody to keep the faith because that's what they're doing in South Florida. Iowa will kick off. Miami had won the toss, chose to defer. It's a low, bouncing kick, and it is fielded back at the 10-yard line by John Harris doesn't get a whole lot of return out of it as he is rolled out of bounds at the 20. Here are the offensive leaders for Miami during the first half of play. And Toretta, you see, having a big first half. 17 of 31, uh, one touchdown. Toretta leads him in rushing with five yards and receiving. Williams and Copeland, the two wide receivers, with five. Williams with the one touchdown. Iowa defensively, both men you see there, Plate and James, are defensive backs and both corners so a lot of tackles downfield because they're throwing the ball to the wide receivers Larry Jones starts out as the single back and he has the ball got a terrific block from Coleman Bell to turn him around the corner and he's going to pick up a uh, four yard looks like they mark him out short of the 25 here's a look at Miami possession now look at this the two times they got the ball inside of I inside the 50 yard line in Iowa they produced a touchdown and a field goal so possession for uh, Miami, inside, they've done some good things with it. Second down and six from the 24. Only one starter healthy enough to be out on the field in the offensive front for Miami. That's Rudy Barber, the left guard. This is Jones again. And Larry Jones, the big guy, 235 pound, a sophomore from Gainesville, believe it or not, has picked up a first down for Miami. I wonder what Miami talked about at halftime. The first two plays, they come out and running the ball straight ahead. I think they knew what those numbers were. Only eight rushing yards in the first half. Miami really runs the ball very well from that three wide receiver, one back set. Ball is at the 32 now. Had a hand in everything so far here in the second half of play. Not much on that one. It'll be 
second down and six. Pause five seconds here so our ABC stations can identify themselves. From the 36. Very conservative start by the Miami Hurricane. Now you got three wide outs at the top of the picture. it go down the middle. He's got the man there to the tight end, Coleman Bell. The ball came loose, and Iowa seems to have it. Coleman Bell lost the ball, no question about it. Olenzak was there, and the Hawkeyes have come away with it. Scott Plate is the man covering it. Number 17 is the tight end. He's going to be open over the middle. Play action fake. Top of your screen. Wide open is Bell. Now let's see what the action. We'll get to it in a minute. Machine broke. We'll get back to it in a second. First down at the 50. For the Hawkeye. Pressure coming from the outside. Pass is thrown underneath, intended for the tight end, Alan Cross. And Hartley didn't get it to it. It was well covered. This is the best field position that Hartley and the Hawkeyes have had the entire ball game. First turnover for Miami. But he was well covered, and Hartley did a smart thing in throwing it out front, away from the defensive back. Second down and ten. Two tight ends, and now as uh, Whitaker comes in, joining Cross, Matt Whitaker. And they run it. Luke Montgomery. Not much. Not much. A couple of yards, that's all. So they're looking at third down and eight. In comes Scooter Lampkin. It's Matt Ide standing there by Hayden, the backup quarterback. Montgomery <laughs> comes back as the protector for Hartley, but checking off. Play. Here we come. Gets it away, and it is incomplete. He waited as long as he could. And then he finally had to let it go, and uh, Darren Crine was all over it. And it's incomplete. So in the punt is Scott Fisher. And back goes Jonathan Harris as the deep man. So Kevin Williams gets a little bit of a reprieve here. That's a low line drive kick. Bounces a little bit. Jonathan Harris wants nothing to do with it. He is not going to expose his 165-pound frame to that much abuse. 42-yard punt. All right, we're ready to go with uh, Miami possessing the ball just beyond their own six-yard line after that punt was killed. Deep. 13.06 to go in the third quarter, and the Hurricanes are leading 10 to nothing. It, I think, in front of A.C. Tellison. Mark Brooks at 15 on the par leads the Greater Milwaukee Open, and we'll have final round coverage for you here on ABC Sports for Eastern Time, 3 Central. Richard Zoko, 14 under, and Jay Hawes at 12. So the Canadian is right there, making a challenge. blizzard years ago back around Las Cruces, New Mexico. He was out on the recruiting trip and he had to drive with his head out the window to snowstorm. Boy, that thing is a bullet, isn't it? 
He can really throw that ball just short of the 20-yard line, and it's a first down, and he gets a little real estate on which to romp now. Horace Copeland, the man who caught it. Copeland, man on man, outside with James. Just goes down, puts to the inside, and the ball is there. It's Copeland's size, he doesn't look that big until you get up close to him, and he's a big man. He can run. <laughs> Six balls now for Copeland, 78 yards. Coretta throws quickly under pressure, and penalty flags come a little late. But they're going to flag the defender, Olenzak, as he tried to cover Coleman Bell, the tight end. South Carolina has given Georgia plenty of uh, fight into their opener with South Carolina, another one of the new members of the Southeastern Conference. Got a mixed crew. Always takes a little longer when you have a mixed <laughs> crew of officials. I thought they were going to generally get away from that. They are. interference is called that was uh, the obvious call pass interference in college football is a 15-yard penalty and a first down from the spot original spot of the play so the ball is marked at the 25-yard line where the Hurricanes will have it at 12:35 to go in the third quarter they lead it by a score of 10 to nothing things have been fairly quiet here in the third quarter so far The second game of the season, Miami's first. Here comes Kevin Williams as they started to loosen it up a little bit as he came with a reverse from the sidelines. And here's John. Georgia and South Carolina, fourth quarter, 7 6 game. And watch Max Straw. He finds the hole and then breaks it. The question is, does he get to the end zone before he's down? It looks like he may be down before crossing the line. They give him the TD anyway. 14-6 in the third quarter. Keith. Don, he burned enough high off. They ought to let him have it anyhow, and they did. Georgia, a lot of people think highly of him in the SEC this year, especially because of their fire and their running game. Jonathan Harris on that play. Harris becoming quite prominent, isn't he? He's out of Houston, Texas. Take a look at the protection for Toretta. One, two, three, four, five quick steps. There you see Harris wide open. Strong safety, Olenzak had to come a long way to cover him. Iowa shutting down the Miami run, but cannot stop the pass. Chris Jones, who is a 6-3 wide out, has come to the near sideline now for Miami. They run it instead uh, with uh, Larry Jones and a penalty flag as they tumble off the field to play. Bach is continuing to run. I thought he went out of bounds. Now they stop the clock at 11.09. It's a hold and against the Canes. Talked about Hayden Fry and all of his walk-ons. Look at this man right here, Brent Bielaba, right here. Came to the university five years ago, walked on, built himself up, hung around, did all the things you're supposed to do, was there for every practice, every workout, up early. Worked himself into a starting position and is the co-captain of this ball club. From a walk-on to a co-captain says a lot about that young man right there. Well, one of the things that uh, you have to take into consideration when you're talking about Iowa football, too, is that the population of the entire state is 2,776,755. And there's some counties in uh, California and Florida that got more people than that. That ball is thrown behind the intended receiver, Copeland. But this Miami team, Bob, uh, looking at the book, they've got 22 members of this team from Dade County. Right. Well, they've stayed at home. They've kept 50, the good ones at home. And 55 from the state of Florida. 
Would Hayden say he only recruited uh, two players from the this state year, of Iowa? Yep. This year from the state of yep. Iowa. That population gives me the reason. He said he, he wanted to, to, to go out and get faster, quicker players. He wants more emphasis on speed. They do have eight from New Jersey, however. It goes back to my old line. If you could keep uh, 15 of the top 100 in New Jersey, you'd be a contender. This is Lamar Thomas, who suffered a sprained uh, knee early on, but he's been back in the ball game since. And he makes that catch up at the 40-yard line. And that's enough by a yard for a first down. No, it is not. I'm sorry, it is not a first down. You got to go far beyond that, up to the 47. The man down on the field looks like it might be Thomas Knight, number eight. It is Thomas Knight shaken up as he made the tackle on Lamar Thomas. And while we're waiting, a reminder at the American Red Cross relief number that we showed at halftime to aid those in Louisiana and Florida is 1-800-842-2200. Miami's next game will be the 19th of September, Florida A&M, and they're playing it in Miami, and that, of course, will be a huge benefit for the relief fund. And here today, American Red Cross volunteers were collecting uh, donations at all the gates coming into Kinnick Stadium. Of course, named here for Niall Kinnick, who was the great player for the University of Iowa and uh, lost his life during the days of the Second World War. 10.49 to go in the third quarter. 45. She doesn't want to go back to work for a while. She likes staying home with the baby. How old's the baby now? She's two months old tomorrow. I swear she's a genius. Yeah. Yeah, she's no done. catchy jingles. <laughs> Look. No like images of snow-capped mountains. She got lucky, I guess. <laughs> no rock stars. No another Heineken. Yeah. No sports stars. No, I've been getting them. None of that is what made Heineken the number one imported beer in America. So you like being a daddy? I wouldn't trade it for anything. You gotta try it. You sound just like my in-laws. Oil. It's the lifeblood of your engine. That makes your oil filter your engine's most vital organ. That's why Fran keeps going the extra mile to make the best protection even better. The Fram Extra Guard Oil Filter. Unique glass fiber paper stops more dirt than any other filter for the best protection ever. Fram Extra Guard. American or import, it's an extra lease on life. It's the weekend, and the Honda automobile plant in Marysville, Ohio, is closed. Everybody's gone home. Well, almost everybody. So, this is a good time to show you around. 10,000 Americans built three out of every five Hondas sold in America right here in Ohio. Did you know that? Well, we won't take up any more of your time. After all, it is the weekend. Bob, it's been relatively conservative here in the third quarter. We used up just about five minutes. Is the, have we had this dramatic a change in what's... Well, I thinking? think Miami came out trying to run the ball, and they found out they couldn't, so they're trying to throw quick passes. I was playing loose, not wanting to give them anything big, and it's working pretty well for them. I was only giving up ten points, and they're in the ball game. The will run it up the middle. Everybody peeled off and just gave him a highway, and the big guy from Pano, California took off and gets the first down at midfield. Tom Knight uh, was down for a good long time, but he walked off the field, and now he's sitting up talking to the trainer. So. And he's new to these parts, Keith. He's a true freshman, just uh, been on campus for about a month. He may not know his way around yet. He may not know where the library is. <laughs> Offensively, offensive line. Dumont 97 does a little twist, comes right up the middle. 
And turn out the lights. Cristobal, Shirey, Serta, all offensive linemen down. Second down and 20 from the 40. A little draw up the middle with Jones. Uh, Bennett, rather, Donnell Bennett, number 33. And the sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale will get it up around the 45. Uh, one of the reasons why the Hurricanes running game is not working, Stephen McGuire, their leading rusher from last year, is out. Jonathan Harris is hurt. So they're having a look at Harris, who has been a very prominent figure for the Hurricanes tonight. And they're looking at knee or maybe ankle on Harris. Maybe a time out for the injury. Here's John Saunders. Southwestern Louisiana facing Tennessee. And Phil Fulmer, of course, had to coach for Johnny Majors, who had recent surgery in his heart. Jerry Colquitt with the swing to Aaron Hayden. 44 yards for the touchdown. 458 total yards for Tennessee as they roll over southwest Louisiana. Back to Keith. John, thank you. And my old friend uh, Johnny Majors has gone home after major heart surgery. Coach, I hope you're feeling good. And I, you know full well that all of us here at ABC Sports wish you the very best. And Jonathan Harris now starting to walk a little better as he gets to the sidelines. Has good numbers for the night. I think he had a cramp, uh, Keith, from the way they were treating him. Yep. Well, it's a muggy night. And easy to get cramps this time of the season. Crowd trying to help their defense now on third down and 15. Toretto lets it go too high, intended for Lamar Thomas. Slapping his hands together as if maybe he didn't run quite where Gino thought he was going to. So the Kings will punt it. And highly the fifth one of the night for Paul Snyder. Iowa again blitzing on that situation as you see Jasper going back to receive the punt. Hawkeyes have played a pretty steady ball game. It's only 10 to nothing. Oh, good pressure. No flag. As the punter tumbles down, here comes number 83, Harold Jasper, and bang down at the nine. That was a good punt, 47 yards. Looks like the boys are talking a little trash down there now, and I don't think Jim Kimberling's going to let that go on very long. He'll have somebody sitting on the pine. This was first half, uh, Keith. Uh, Hartley was 10 of 13. Leading rusher was uh, Terry and Montgomery, the two backs. Not a lot there offensively, defensively for Miami. Farrow and Smith, the two linebackers, led the way in tackles. There's a look at Iowa, not much. They started in their own territory, punted four times, fumbled twice, and gave it up on downs once. They start this possession from the 10. Out of the shotgun, Hartley takes off. Got a couple of good blocks. And he runs it out to about the 18-yard line. Jesse Armstead sought him out and put him down. Quarterback draw. Aiden Fry said that uh, Hartley is the best running quarterback he has had. Interesting that uh, Aiden's had a bunch of pretty good quarterbacks. In fact, seven of the last nine all Big Ten quarterbacks were under that man right there. He does a great job tutoring quarterbacks. Second down and two. Give that ball to Lampkin. And Marvin Lampkin will pick up the first down for the Hawkeyes at the 21-yard line. receiver comes in and Montgomery a fullback goes out Kuyaba is also in and the pass to the sidelines for Damon Hughes and Miami has kept it pretty quiet tonight there were three occasions and one in particular when he was wide open 
but they couldn't get the ball to him. He had a relatively quiet night. Well, you talk about speed and quickness and the difference in these two teams. Miami has the speed. Iowa has does not have the team speed. But that man right there, Danon Hughes, does possess it. Caught two touchdown passes last week in their game against NC State. They need to get him the ball more because he can make some things happen. Two for 24 so far tonight. Scooter Lampkin taken down by Michael Barrow. Barrow is a senior. He's 230 pounds. You know the story about him and his family. But Michael is a, he's a tough customer in the middle of that linebacking court. He had an absolutely sensational ball game in that fight with Florida State last year. Yes, he did. You know, Miami's linebackers, including Barrow, are so quick that on third down, they don't even take him out for a nickel situation. They leave him in. They, they, they can run. Third down and five. That was last year, and this year, they're only one of eight. Iowa is. Up by Hart leave. Little go down the sidelines to his tight end, Allen Cross. The ball is too high, and that'll bring in the punter. on that series, didn't we? That's a little better kick. Kevin Williams is in there this time. He won't get to it. The ball kicks straight out of bounds. And it's 6 0 2 to go in the third quarter. 10 0 Miami. And they'll have the ball when we come. Little story here about Hayden Fry. In the 25 seasons before he came, five coaches could win only 99 games. So he has definitely had his impact. He is the dean of Big Ten coaches, was the Big Ten coach of the year the last two years. And the third winningest active coach in college football. At their own 40-yard line, they lead 10 to nothing. Toretta dumps it off to Coleman Bell, and Bell runs away from Woodrow and takes the ball all the way down to the 40-yard line of Iowa. <laughs> Coleman Bell playing tight end at 6'2", 225 pounds, a senior from Tampa. Play action is going to come this way. That'll pull the linebacker, and Bell is right here, and he'll just slide out. The pass will be to him. Play action pulls the linebacker. Bell slips out. Toretta gets him the ball, and he beats the linebacker and does a pretty good job getting downfield. Broke the tackle to the defensive back. Jonathan Harris is back in the lineup. So he's all right. Toretta pops it into the arms of Chris Jones, that big wide out. Now it's 24 of 41 for Gino Toretta, and he's right at 319 yards. So he's having a big night. And those numbers are being accumulated uh, out of necessity because it takes you a while to get an offensive line trained and it's green going out there for Miami. As Bobby said earlier, easier to pass block than to run block. And he's throwing quick, too. He has to throw quick. He's getting pressure if he goes back seven steps. Second down and one. And get away to Donnell Pettit. Bennett will tumble down to the 22 and a first down. McGuire, Stephen McGuire, is not playing tonight. He's still trying to get over knee surgery. The running backs are Bennett and Jones at 225 and 235. And when they get McGuire back, I mean, he brings wisdom plus a tremendous amount of ability. So if this team ever gets everybody healthy, Everybody, everybody worries about their offense because of the spread and the big play capabilities, but it's their defense that dominates. You talk to the coaches and they'll say that defense is tough to score on. Let us pass on the money to Kevin Williams, and Williams is out of bounds at about the 10 beyond the first down marker, and it'll be first down as Bo Porter brought him down. Bo's one of the young men out here at Iowa. 
Newark, New Jersey. Toretta is from California out there where you are, Keith. He grew up, up uh, north of San Francisco. Yeah, he grew up surfing and skateboarding, and uh, he gave up uh, the skateboarding, though, after he broke both arms in separate accidents. It's Syracuse rolling along against East Carolina. That's a pretty good football team. When they play at the moment, they are a very good football team. To the end zone, intercepted. Bo Porter picked it off. Toretta tried to force it. Porter picked his pocket. Well, here's Porter right here. Take a look. The man is the, the receiver's going to run into the end zone. And as Toretta goes this way and throws back, the defensive back is going to cut in front of him. Good coverage and a poor throw, a poor choice. You just can't swing out there and decide you're going to throw it like it's open every day in practice. You have to wait, be patient, and be honest. And that time, Porter made the big play. It was intended for Jonathan Harris. Miami this half. They fumbled, they punted, and now have been intercepted in their three possession. They do lead, however, 10 to nothing. What Iowa needs, Keith, is a big play. They need something to get some life back and confidence back in this ball team. Walker. Ryan Terry, a running back in a wide-out position. The ball is handed to Montgomery. And perhaps they need to get a little more determined about running the ball as we check in with John. Syracuse lost to East Carolina last year, not this time. Marvin Graves dumps it off to Shelby Hill. He goes in for the touchdown. The teams combined for around 1,200 yards total offense. And of course, you can see Texas against Syracuse next week. They're on ABC. Back to Keith. Bring your earmuffs up. <laughs> in the dome. Go, 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 go. Ryan Terry. What a place to go. A swarm and swarm and just tap to you. Look like a face mask in there. No flag. Jim Hartley, University of Iowa quarterback, has been uh, awarded the Honda Scholar Athlete Award of the Week by American Honda. Proud to support amateur athletics. Hartley was a fifth year senior quarterback here at the University of Iowa. He's actually in graduate school, having graduated in finance. So uh, he's from Woodstock, Illinois, and a very Honda recognizes that and has rewarded him, and there's a penalty flag on the field as Hartley is running, trying to pick up a first down. Now, he's got the yardage for the first down, but let's see about the pick. Apparently against Miami, at least the Hawkeyes are pointing that way. 2.44 to go in the third quarter. Hold defense. Oh, that's first down for the Hawkeyes. Moves them on down the road, ten yards. Penalties now. Miami has been flagged nine times for 67 yards. Iowa twice for 11 yards. You see those initials on the shirt of Jim Kimmerling, the referee? Those are to honor the memory of everybody's friend in college football, Davey Nelson, who was the executive director of the Rules Committee, longtime coach at Delaware, played for Fritz Meister at Michigan, a wonderful man. took a lick and a half from Darren Smith and the pass is incomplete. It's a little screen and Darren Smith, the All-American linebacker for the Hurricanes, number 45, reads it all the way and if he hadn't have been there, Barrel would have. Hurricanes have a number of outstanding players, a lot on defense that are up for awards. Uh, Smith and Barrow both up for the Butkus Award, the outstanding linebacker. Second down and ten. They're asking uh, Kevin Patrick, the man who came flying across, and they're asking for movement along the Iowa front. 
So they will talk about it, and we'll listen to Jack. Well, Keith, the offensive line for the Iowa Hawkeyes have had a tough seven months. You see, back in February, all the coaches got together and went on a Caribbean cruise. One didn't come back. He suffered a fatal heart attack. John O'Hara, and he's, what they've decided to do now is the entire team is wearing a small black patch with JBO in tribute to their former offensive line coach. The penalty against the Canes will move the ball across the 45 to about the 46. It'll be second down and five. Hayden Pry not only lost uh, Hughes, but he also lost to Carl Jackson, his offensive coordinator, who moved on to coach with the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Little shovel to Montgomery. Penalty flag goes down as Montgomery breaks a tackle and goes for what could be a first down. He got away from Michael Barrow. And that in itself is news. Barrow eyeballing the back. He reads his play. That's his gap. He's got to fill the gap. He's there, but Montgomery, who's six foot and 212 pounds, spins out of it. But it'll come back. It's a holding against Iowa. So at 219 to go in the third quarter, the Hawkeyes are for the moment uh, stalled because of a penalty flag. An infraction by, the by them. Or, if you like, in simpler terms, a foul. That'll make it second down and 16, and Cuyalo checks in. Three wideouts. Hartley in a hurry. Gets rid of it to Terry. And Ryan Curry can't go anywhere. He's got the ball all right, but the gain is quite short. Tackled by Paul White, first man to get there, a junior from Tampa. Mentioned that uh, Hayden Fry was a former quarterback. He calls a lot of the plays. You asked him the other day what his offensive philosophy was. He said it's not like it's not any different than anybody else's. I just take what they give me. He said, I call it a little bit different. He says, I call it you scratch where it itches. Well, he's uh, he's not finding many places to scratch here tonight because they're not giving him much to work on. Which more like pain. He got it away though. Perry picked it up right off the grass and made something out of nothing. And uh, poor Jim Hartley is back there on the ground and he's finally up now counting his limbs. But uh, it took a gritty play. Well, it's a play action fake. And he just doesn't step up in time. He's pressured from the outside and just barely gets the ball off to Terry. Great play by Hartley. Wayne Johnson was the defender for Miami, creating all of that. And here's the punt. Good one. And a fair catch is called inside the 20 by Kevin Williams. Let's see about the flag, and it's thrown down around the 20 yard line. So Tuesday night, the new season's hit his back. Spend an hour in Jantique where medical school is definitely stranger than paradise emmy winning producers of northern exposure bringing you going to extremes tuesday at 10 9 central after coach here on abc flag thrown against the canes discussion on the sideline and Kimmerling has gone over there Jim now has come back to talk with the people out on the field but it's a personal foul against Miami now they'll mark it off looks like it may be against somebody on the sideline it looks like it may be uh, the uh, strength coach well they were certainly talking to it Maybe he's just helping to get everybody back. I think he's moving everybody off the sideline because you've got to stay out of that chalk area. 
foul occurred on the field, and Larry Jones is now the running back, the single back, as the crowd once again tries to help on the home team's defense. Jones jumped over the top of a man along the line of scrimmage and pounds his way out across the 15. So that's a pretty good pickup. It's a smart play too by Toretta. If you can, if you're backed up and you're on the road and the crowd is giving you a tough time, if you could just get one play off, then the, then the crowd, the next play will not be as loud. They'll say, well, it doesn't bother you that much. We won't do it as loud. Second down and 13. Ball at the Miami 15. Toretta lets it go and it is incomplete. And only incomplete. Five seconds here. And the time is ticked off to end the third quarter. And we'll be back with more between Miami and Iowa after this message and the word from our ABC station. Dave Maggard, athletic director, University of Miami, who came in last night with Lamar Thomas, who has just cleared some legal obstacles to make himself eligible. Dave explained it to us how it was that he made himself eligible through appeal. Well, I'll explain it briefly, Keith. Uh, yesterday afternoon, the U.S. Attorney's Office in Miami uh, made uh, Lamar Thomas and Jason Marucci eligible for the pretrial intervention program uh, regarding the Pell Grant. So it was a, uh, a legal kind of a thing, uh, but... Uh, we had indicated that Lamar could not practice or participate until this was done, and it was accomplished yesterday afternoon. On third down and 13 to start the fourth quarter, Toretta scrambling, trying to get his first down. It does not appear that he was able to do that, so it'll be fourth and very short yardage. It's kind of a hard ball game here. Oh, it's a tough ball game, Keith. I think with everything that's happened over the last two or three weeks, uh, we look a little bit out of sync, and, and uh, yet Iowa's playing very, very well. So uh, I think with all of the things, all of the distractions that we've had, uh, you know, we, we obviously want to get out of here with a win. But nope. uh, Iowa is playing well. Nobody in the world would have, uh, he may have picked up that first down. Look at that. I think he did. Yeah, he did. Well, Kimmerling's a little bit indecisive about it. Put it down again, guys. Let me see. And he did. But was there ever any thought uh, about forfeiting this ball game? Nobody could have blamed you if you wanted to. Well, I think uh, I think when the hurricane took place, we we thought about the possibility of postponing it. Uh, some people talked about canceling it, but uh, really, after we got ourselves together a little bit, we felt that maybe we could be much more positive force in Miami or calling attention to the problems in South Florida uh, by playing and the visibility of our, our team. So we felt that maybe it would help the relief fund actually, uh, or the relief efforts really in South Florida. And uh, once we had three or four days to think about it and get our team back together and off campus, uh, because we, we really couldn't function on campus, uh, we decided to come up and play the game. Now, you don't play again until the 19th of September when you play Florida A&M, I guess down in the Orange Bowl. I, I would presume that to be a major relief effort. Oh, uh, well, we will, uh, we will try to use every opportunity that we can to focus on the relief efforts in South Florida and to help many of the people who are are really suffering because of this uh, this hurricane, Keith. You just don't know until you see it. But we're going to try to be as positive and as proactive as we can possibly be to try to help in this effort to all we can. Well, this is the telephone number that is being uh, used to uh, try to stimulate more and more a relief help. Here's Coleman Bell breaking loose on a pass completion and turning in a huge play as he goes down to about the 16-yard line. Again, I say to you, Coleman Bell is the fellow who made that great catch in the Florida State game a year ago. So he has become a money player. But here's your, uh, the uh, telephone number is 1-800-842-2200. So keep that in mind as time goes on and those who can help, please do. But here's a replay on Bell's big play. And it looks like now Miami, with that play, is going to be in position to add to their point total. And we, uh, we had said earlier, David, when you leave here uh, and, and start your flight back to Florida, you're going home to shake hands with true reality. Absolutely. And uh, there's still a lot of devastation around there. We, we simply couldn't have been on campus the last couple of weeks. But we're going back to campus on uh, 
uh, tomorrow uh, afternoon. And uh, in many ways, I think it will be good for our players to get back on campus because we can now handle it in terms of housing and so on. But it will be reality, no question about it. And classes are still scheduled to start the 14th. Classes begin the 14th, uh, orientation the 10th. Well, we miss you in California, old shot putter. David, a former Olympian, great athlete himself, and moved from California, University of, down to Miami, and we wish you good luck. Well, thank you, Keith. It's always a pleasure to visit with you, too. Good to see you. Thank you. Dave Maggard, the athletic director, University of Miami. Now the Canes are in position to make a serious scoring threat. Toretta, pump, throw, pass. Jukes away to the goal line and just short. These wide people for Miami, Bob, seem so confident it's incredible. Well, you see the strength right here. The strength of this offense is the wide receiver. And it's quick passing, Keith. It's three steps. Just throw the ball out to them when they go down five yards and hitch and let them run. And they're great athletes. Thomas and Williams and Copeland, all three of them, just get them the ball and they run with it. The offensive line is what's immature right now and needs some seasoning. Beretta has now reached 400 total yards in his passing for the night. Larry Jones got a hold short. It'll be second down and goal from about the one. Toretta 28 out of 40 for his 400 yards. And he's had to do that because the running game is just not working. Again, the leading runner from last year, as you see, 400 for Toretta. McGuire is out and the offensive line is very green. a pass reception and a big run that is the big play as the Miami Hurricanes build their lead to 16 to nothing. And I've got to be believing now as we reach this point of the ball game, Bob, that the Iowa defensive people might be getting a little tired. You get tired pursuing. <laughs> is good. It is 17 to nothing Miami. The preseason number one in most everybody's poll with 12 minutes and 34 seconds to play in their opening game of the season. Teams have stuck it in the end zone for the second time tonight. Now Iowa must respond because time becomes precious at 12 and a half minutes to go in the ball game. And here comes Damon Hughes. Saves a little time as he tumbles out of bounds and we go off to New York and jump. Last year's co-national champion Washington at Arizona State. Opening drive, eight plays, 65 yards. Jay Berry knocks it in from eight yards out. They lead 7-0. Keith. God, I'm wondering if that uh, redshirt freshman quarterback who effectively would be the third or maybe even the fourth quarterback on that entire squad with Powers leaving and McGee being suspended and all that kind of stuff, and now they got to go with a red shirt freshman against the Washington Huskies. The Hawkeyes haven't been too uh, too successful in fourth quarters, going against the number one scoring defense in the nation last year. That's a good pass, and it's a good catch by Bannon Hughes. He just went up and caught that ball right in front of Paul White and turns in a big play, and it's first down for Iowa near the 49-yard line. After three quarters, Miami led, led 10 to nothing. They scored first in the uh, fourth quarter, but look at the passing yards. 330 to Miami, rushing only 43. Iowa only getting total yards, 162. And time of possession on Iowa's side, that's not unusual for Miami because when they move offensively, they usually either score or give it up rather quickly. Shotgun, pressure coming, Madeira's after him, passes away, got a man wide open. Damon Hughes, he was shut out almost. I think he caught one short ball in the second half against North Carolina State last week, but somehow now they're finding a way to get the ball to it. And he's a player. He's a player, he's also a baseball player. He was drafted in the third round 
last year by the Milwaukee uh, Brewers. Spent the summer in Helena playing in the Pioneer League and roomed with uh, Kenny Felder, the old uh, quarterback from uh, Florida State, who was their number one draft choice. Hit 317. Threw a football around a little bit. On first down, Lampkin for the yard. Jack? Keith, you never know who you're going to find in the stands of an Iowa game. I've run into Tom Arnold, who along with Roseanne are the stars of that hit show, Roseanne. Yeah. How many games do you get to, Tom? Uh, four or five, and then the bowl game, you know. We have a farm here, you know. Yeah. So we, we hang out in Iowa a lot. Kind of like Iowa, don't you? Yeah, I went to school here. I love it here. It's great. Not the way you'd like it to turn out, though. No, but it's not over yet. What can we expect with the hit show this year? Any changes? Well, it's going to be same, more the same, and, you know, uh, a big surprise on the first episode on September 15th. We can watch it on ABC, and he's down here in the cheap seats, Keith. <laughs> he's where? He's in... I said he's down here in the end zone in what we call the cheap seats. <laughs> I guarantee you one thing, there weren't a whole lot of tickets floating around for sale. Uh, you take what you get. You probably got here late. <laughs> Hawkeyes trying to move that ball downfield now. They're looking at third down 11 on their own 36 yard line, and the time remaining is 11 10 with Miami leading 17 to nothing. It was Dana Hughes involved in the previous big play, and we've lost some lights. The one bank of the lights, I think, is going out. They're going to stop it. For a minute. So there's one of the lights. The lights are being done, incidentally, by Musco. They, these are the people who have come up with a system, uh, and it's an incredible system of lighting stadiums around the country. And another one just popped out. But it's an Iowa company, which I really never knew until a couple of days ago. They're they're based in Oskaloosa. So you've got uh, a delay now for the moment until we can get some new lanterns up. So while we're waiting for more light, we'll pay some bills. Last decade, that is a lot, folks. Lights are back. The lamp is lit. So once more, third down 11 for the Hawkeyes from the Miami 36-yard line. They trail 17 to nothing. You've got 10.50 to play at the ball game. If there is to be hope, something needs to happen right about here for you. Under the pressure. Soft little pass is away. Number 43. Between time is Pat Riley. And he just nailed the quarterback. So it is fourth down, and the Hawkeyes have to go. Fourth down and nine. Ball is on the 34-yard line. the shotgun down the middle no I think the pass was intended for Dana Hughes Darren Klein was all over Jim Hartley and the pass flew away and here is John Saunders Mississippi State and Texas Peter Gardere for Texas is picked off by Keith Joseph he sets up yet another touchdown as Mississippi State wins. Jackie Sherrill, seven straight against Texas, both at AM and Mississippi State. 28 10 is the final. Back to Keith. John Makovic, new coach down at Texas, got some rebuilding to do. Boy, well, he's changing the system, too. Yeah, totally. Changing the style. Jackie Sherrill's got a good football team down there in Starkville, Mississippi. Beware those who travel through Starkville this season. Carrying the ball is Larry Jones, and he's spinning and fighting and struggling, and he doesn't get a whole lot out of it. As Miami taking over the ball on fourth down in completion, leading by a score of 17 to nothing. You know that Alabama and Florida both have to go into Starkville this year to play Mississippi State. So 
they're going to be they're going to be a factor in who wins the SEC. Second down and six. Look at uh, Olin Zach, the deep people defensively. It's a very good penetration by the Iowa people up front. Larry Jones trying to find some running room. The linebacker came pounding in. That's Matt Hilliard and made the tackle. Let's pause five seconds here to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. The team that most everybody had picked is the preseason number one with a comfortable lead now as we go inside nine minutes to play. Washington Huskies apparently scoring in their first possession out at Arizona State in Tempe tonight. Texas A&M, another one of the contenders to winner today at LSU. Notre Dame, a big winner over Northwestern, though it took them a while to get going. Carlos Etheridge uh, making that catch, the tight end. Etheridge is kind of an interesting guy in this whole scheme of things for Miami. With all of the offensive linemen who are hurt and so thin at uh, the offensive front, if one of the tackles had been hurt, tonight for Miami. Etheridge would have been the man to put on number 68 and go play a tackle position. Well, when, and, and last year when, when Erickson first asked him to uh, maybe move uh, sometimes offensive tackle, gain some weight, he said, I don't want to play offensive tackle. He actually <laughs> lost some weight. <laughs> Here's the punt away, and it's a pretty good one. Fielded back at the 10-yard line by Jesper. And he'll return it. We'll be back with more after this message and the word from our ABC station. The ball sitting on the real grass, now covered with dew at 7.45 to go at Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, and the Iowa Hawkeyes beleaguered. They're trailing 17-0 against one of the best defenses of the decade in college football. They're having their troubles with it. Jim Hartley trying to crank it up out of the shotgun on first and 10 from 14. Let's it go. It is good to Hughes. Damon Hughes out to the 25 for a first down. And here's Jackaroo. Keith, too often we read about the bad boy image of the Miami Hurricanes, but here's an interesting note. The CFA publishes the graduation averages, and the CFA average last year, as you can see, was only 57.1%. But look at the Miami team. 72.2%. Now, this is the sixth year that they've been above the CFA average, and they're only one of 16 schools that are on the honor roll, 16 teams that are above 70%. Project. Iowa's quarterback is a graduate student. You see that more and more of that. Here's a penalty flag thrown down. As another first down before the books. Scooter Lampkin picking it up. Let's see about the flag. I think it might be against the Hawkeyes. I think maybe right there. number three got caught. Illegal block above the waist. They're very picky about that. We have a Miami player hurt. It's quarterback Dexter Sailor, a uh, Siegler. Timeout for the injured player with uh, 7.14 to play in the game. And this is what we have for you next week. Texas, Syracuse, Tennessee, Georgia. We also have Oregon, Stanford, Missouri, Illinois, Bowling Green, Ohio State. Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station. And then call your local cable operator if you'd like to see one of the others. See if he's offering it in your area. Available live on pay-per-view. That's next Saturday at 3.30 Eastern here on ABC Sports. I'm sure that uh, Dennis Erickson and uh, his entire coaching staff, with all of the 11 injuries they had, uh, holding their breath every time one of their players is down, but they seem to bounce up. Defensively, they haven't had many problems. Uh, and Dennis will tell you that when he came here <clears throat> four years ago, that uh, when he saw that defense, uh, they didn't want to change anything about it. They were very aggressive and they were very quick. And he has continued to recruit the same style and the same type of athlete, and the results have been the same. So after the penalty, it's first down and 17 on the 18-yard line. Hartley is back, pretty good protection. Pass is off, pass good to Jasper. Well, he made it exciting, and there's a penalty flag at the end of the play. Next 
suspect this one might go the other way. I think it was a late hit right there by Miami, maybe. Yep. So the personal foul is tacked on. And the Hawkeyes make a big move up the field. So the defensive coordinator for Erickson is up in the booth uh, on the right side there, just having a little drink. Sonny Lubick, and uh, he has been the coordinator. Miami has not allowed a point in the last eight quarters or a touchdown to be scored. They have done an outstanding job. They only allowed nine touchdowns last year and only two on the ground, and they have not allowed a point here this evening. Now Iowa sits with the first down at the Miami 49, and the ball is given away to Cliff King. King carrying for the first time tonight. Gets nothing. Texas Aggies went into the Southeast Conference Death Valley and won today. That's another defense that beat you like a drum. This is Damon Hughes, caught the ball, spurred his shoulders, and tried to bang inside the 40 and couldn't get there. So they're two yards short of the first down. The clock rolls along at 5.50 to go. Nebraska scored a lot of points against Utah. Colorado looking pretty good with the new system that they put in out there. It's now a passing system. Big eight's going to time up. Big eight's going to pass in Colorado, see Oklahoma. <laughs> Georgia finally turned it on a little bit, broke loose. That was a game that was played Thursday night as Cale Gundy had a huge night. They went down into Lubbock. A lot of people thinking that Texas Tech might be one of the principal challengers to AM in the Southwest Conference, but uh, the Sooners made it look easy. California pretty good size win today and there is a considerable win a team that we were talking about earlier the Maroons of Mississippi State Alabama winning today Tennessee winning today We're setting up possibly a very important uh, showdown on the third Saturday in October Knoxville. The California win was the uh, first win for uh, coach Gilbertson Keith Gilbertson Keith yeah coming down from uh, the Huskies of Washington wins his role opener. I've had people suggest to me that uh, Pittsburgh might have a fairly complete football team this year. They've, they've filled some holes, and uh, the quarterback is seasoned now, and they, they might be kind of troublesome. Third down and two from the 41 yard line. <laughs> Quick pop, that's good for the first down. Trying to break loose is Lampkin. And Lampkin will have the first down for the Hawkeyes at about the 30-yard line. Big score for Ole Miss over Auburn. Auburn has not been able to recover from all those shenanigans of a year ago. Some of the people they recruited did not qualify. pretty good protection he looks to his left sets up and then he throws to his right he was looking to free safety number six over to keep him away from uh, Jasper he beat number four white he's going to release inside and then he's going to come back to the outside he's splitting the two defensive backs and the throw is perfect that's the first touchdown in ten quarters against the University of Miami Andy Kreider for the extra point it's good. Five and a half minutes to play. It is now a ten point Miami lead. Things are different. The new Pontiac Grand Am Sports Sedan proves it. 
things to better. Because its new overhead cam engine gives you more than outstanding power. It gives you better mileage than a cord or Camry for a whole lot less. In fact, Consumers Digest named Grand Am a Best Buy. Pontiac Grand Am, a new kind of driving excitement. Oh, he looked scarier 25 years ago. Did I? You looked scared. I don't know. I thought I hit it well for an innocent groom. You were innocent for the 60s. Any regrets? None. You? Just one. What? That I waited 25 years to give you this. The 25th anniversary diamond. A brilliant celebration of the loving marriage. I've got goosebumps. Well, you've given me goosebumps for 25 years. <laughs> Last night, Russ Beeler, owner of Lake Edna KFC, opened Hammer's eyes to new popcorn chicken. Delicious, crispy, bite-sized morsels. A whole new way to enjoy the Colonel's chicken. The problem was, no one could get him to go on. Until the last piece was gone. New KFC popcorn chicken. Treat yourself for $1.99, the band just $5.99 in Lake Edna, or your neck of the woods. Before that Iowa scoring drive, Harold Jasper had not seen a pass. In that possession, he caught two balls, 49 yards, including the 31-yard touchdown reception. Jasper is the only non-senior starter for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Everybody else, all 10 of them, are fifth-year seniors. Jasper, just a sophomore. So now we see Miami putting a lot of sure-handed people up front, perhaps anticipating Iowa might try the onside kick. Todd Romano will be the man kicking. He, incidentally, is from Florida, West Palm. At five and a half minutes, I might be more willing to just move on down here. up playing the position so McNeil just goes down and covers the ball you do not if you are the receiving team have to wait for the ball to come to you you go get it it does not have to travel 10 yards for the receiving team to possess it only for the kicking team to cover it. there is the stunning upset of the day I mean that is startling it was in Fayetteville too Citadel, yeah, that's right. They are one. You know, if those big upsets are going to happen, normally they'll happen early in the season, first or second that, game. Tulsa beating uh, Houston. Yep. Houston's in maybe lean time. They're trying to get new people into that. Uh, not much there for Larry Jones. Brought down by Tyrone Boudreau. The Green Wave beats the Ponies. BYU. Settling in for a big battle with uh, San Diego State that tied USC today. Hawaii is thought by some to perhaps be a contender in the WAC. Donnell Bennett checks in. Nevada joining the Western Athletic Conference. Here's Toretta's pass. It's right on the numbers, and it's complete down inside the 35-yard line of Iowa, and it's a first down. And there's a healthy-looking answer. Sun-washed. Copeland now has seven catches, 89 yards. Coming up on four and a half minutes to go in the ball game. Miami first down. Ball at the Iowa 34. Run it with Jones. Bennett. Donnell Bennett. And Bennett's to the 19. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. Two deep zone for Miami. Five short all along here. The receiver is here. Now he's going to go down, break in, and out to the outside. 
Watch as the uh, quarterback will look to his left to hold the safety in, and then the receiver, Jasper, runs the corner route between them, partly with a great throw. That's the first touchdown against uh, Miami in uh, more than two games. Some big numbers there. On first down, give it away again to the running back Bennett. The Canes are perfectly content to pound the ball along on the ground. Tempers are getting a little short. Iowa frustrated, I'm sure. On Labor Day night Monday, we invite you to join us here at ABC Sports for ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the season premiere. That old classic matchup, the Redskins and the Cowboys. I mean, it's always been a sick'em, and it will be again, 9 Eastern time, here on ABC Sports. Jimmy Johnson coach of the University of Miami. In fact, uh, Dennis Erickson uh, took a trip out there to camp. It's been a few days as you can always learn something. You never know where you're going to pick up something new. Second down and eight. Coretta very quickly bangs it into the arms of number 35 Darrell Spencer. And Spencer goes flying in. Spencer's coming off what? Arthroscopy. Didn't he have a, a, a knee surgery? Here he is right here. He's just going to beat the jam, get around here, and Toretta's just going to get him the ball. Nice piece of uh, avoiding the jam. Watch it right there. Jam beats the jam. Looks for the ball. Good timing on the throw. Hurricanes come back, answer the touchdown by Iowa with one of their own. And at 3.13 to play, I would suggest to you that was the door slam. Into the screen, good. And it's 24 to 7 Miami. University of Miami. Record crowd of 70,397. It was a record by eight people over the old Kinnick Stadium record set. When Iowa State came calling back in 1990. Now here's Jack. Keith, let's tell you about the travel plans for the University of Miami. They are leaving Iowa City immediately following this game by charter. They are going to fly back to West Palm Beach, Florida, get on buses and travel back up to Dodger Town. Dennis Erickson before the game said they're going to load up their gear and leave early tomorrow morning to go back to Coral Gables, as you heard Dave Maggard say. But I said, are you going to give your team a rest? He says, yes, we're going to take Monday, Tuesday, and possibly Wednesday off. Not to heal, not to rest. He says, because my boys have got a lot of work to do down in South Florida. Yeah, they got a lot of work to do. Well, the coaches have a lot of work to do, yeah. too. And, you know, uh, we mentioned uh, Erickson's home is severely damaged. Uh, Sonny Lubick's home severely damaged. Unlivable. And uh, I understand that uh, they're going to be housing themselves in one of the hotels for a while until they really find out what's, you know, what's to be done. Baseball scores drifting across your screen there. Dane Pruitt will kick off. Hughes and Jasper are the deep people for Iowa. It's a hanger for Dane and Hughes at the 16. A little help on the corner here. It's a fine return by Dane and Hughes out to the 42-yard line. Maybe the 43 before Rowan Marley. Got him down. Every time I look up at somebody making a tackle, Todd Barry points at some freshman. And just got him stockpiled. Uh, Rowan Marley is the uh, son of the uh, reggae legend uh, Bob Marley. Here's your 800 number to help the American Red Cross disaster relief. Now, this includes Louisiana as well as Florida. That ball got loose, and the Miami Hurricanes have covered it, and it's Rusty Medeiros who ought to be entitled to take the rest of the night off. I mean, he was on that night before it even really hit the ground. And Hayden, disappointed. Well, this emotion, the, the, the snap is too soon. Either Devlin snapped it too soon or Hartlib called for it too soon because the man in motion didn't even get across the center. Didn't matter to Medeiros. He just jumped on it. 
Iowa's, rem Iowa's remaining schedule, the Iowa State, that's never easy. That's the old battle for the state title. And uh, then they have to go to Colorado. Then they have to go to Ann Arbor. Frank Costas in the ball game now at quarterback for the Miami Hurricanes. Frank, the man of the future for the Canes, turns and hands the ball to Danielle Ferguson, who is a freshman from Miami. Costa is a sophomore from Philadelphia, and here's your scoring summary. Dane Pruitt, a 27-yard field goal to make it 3-0. Second quarter, it went to 10-0 as Kevin Williams capped off a touchdown march with an 11-yard score. And Larry Jones ran it in from a yard to make it 17-0. Harold Jasper from 31 yards catches a heart lead pass 17-7. And uh, Miami answers that Daryl Spencer takes it in from 17 yards. And that's where we are at 24-7. And here comes the freshman again, Ferguson. He's, he's a true freshman. Yeah, he's just out of high school. Jackson. You see uh, Toretta with the uh, the pads that he wears around uh, his rib cage. It looks like they're taping ice on the arm. And as many times as he's thrown the ball tonight, I would certainly think he would need some ice. It's like pitching. He's thrown it enough to have qualified for full nine innings, maybe ten. While the clock is on, get off the gray area. Four and a half to five. And Ferguson again. Toretta now 31 out of 51 for 433 yards. Two touchdowns intercepted one time. You recognize that kid right there? Ferguson, number seven. He was in the backfield with my kid last year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I Brian mean, Brian was complaining. He says, we handed the balls off too much. He ran for too many yards. I wanted to throw some more. <laughs> Inside two minutes now as Frank Costa settles him for the snap. And it's fourth down and three. And penalties flags are on the ground as whistles stop him. It's still the first team, if you can call it that. It's the offensive line unit that started the ball game. Patched as it was and its procedure against Miami the executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara coordinating producer of ABC's ABC's college football is Bob Goodrich who produced tonight's game in Iowa directed by Larry Cam our technical director Gary Larkin associate producer for college football is Jimmy Ressler associate director Dave Kibiak our production manager Lenny Nathan tech top managers Les Weiss and Frank Fager Assistant to the producer, Steve Shunk and Paula Coker, a statistician, Dave Bernson. He's been here so long, uh, I don't even remember when he first came. Spotter Todd Berry, who, like Dave, has been around for a good long time. Mark DeMetto, our computer statistics, our booth coordinator, Jenny Thompson, and our sideline coordinator, Dick Shafter, who thanks the weatherman very much for having been able to keep his feet dry. <laughs> Well, how did the top 10 do today? Miami and Washington both winning. Notre Dame, Florida State won. Michigan and Florida were idle. Everybody in the top 10 that played has either won or are winning. So there'll probably be no movement in the top 10 come Monday. It takes about three weeks to sometimes five season to really get some resolution among your, your top ten teams anyway. The Huskies have gone to a 14-0 lead in the second quarter, and uh, the story out there, of course, was Brett Powers left when he didn't have the job at quarterback, transferred to Ohio State. Garrick McGee was uh, arrested on a burglary charge and suspended from the team. The number three man, a redshirt freshman, started for Arizona State at uh, quarterback and Bruce Snyder, who is new to the Arizona State program coming over from Cal, just absolutely stunned last week with all of that development. But to be in the ball game with Washington at 14 to nothing in the second quarter is not that bad. Again, let us tell you that next week we'll have Texas Syracuse from the Carrier Dome, Tennessee, Georgia down in Athens, Missouri, Illinois, Oregon, Stanford, Bowling Green, Ohio State, 
Check your local listings for the game on your ABC station, and then you should call your local cable operator to find out which of the regional games might be available for you live on pay-per-view if you should choose to uh, do some zapping. <laughs> From channel to channel. Uh -huh. Happy birthday, Mom. My birthday. Send me a cake. Happy birthday, Mom. Send me a cake. As Gino, he looks like he's happy with the way things went. I would think that uh, the Miami people have got to be reasonably satisfied, uh, considering what has happened to them, considering what was dogging them during the days they were trying to prepare, and considering what happened to their families and their homes. But to come out here to Iowa City and win a ball game 24 to 7 against an Iowa team that is never easy here. And improving off the game last yep. week. Yep. Uh, Miami uh, defensively uh, outstanding, very aggressive, as we mentioned uh, in the opening. Emotionally, they were fine. The offense had some problems, especially uh, the timing. But uh, Toretta just stepped up and really uh, did some outstanding things in getting the ball to the wide receivers, and they did the rest. There's an example, though, of that old foot speed. Hartlieb looked like he might be uh, finding a way to pick up some yardage, and along comes a fellow named Marley, who's a freshman, just simply ran and filled the hole and stuck. There's just no substitute for speed. That's caught by Ryan Terry. And we're now counting off the seconds in the ball game as the Hurricanes are going to win this one, 24 to 7. And they will surely continue as number one, having uh, played their first game now. Because they were everybody's choice in preseason. All the baby four. Jim Hartley wants to go deep with it, does go deep with it, and the pass is incomplete. The pass was intended for Harold Jester, the young man who caught the touchdown pass for the Iowa Hawkeyes, and that stops your clock at 37 seconds. I might, however, suggest to those in the Big Ten that don't write a W down beside your Iowa team. That's for sure. They have a tough uh, opening uh, four or five games, as you mentioned, Iowa State next week, but then they go to uh, Colorado and then Michigan one of the toughest schedules in the country, but so does Miami. Hartley's pass is good. Anthony Dean catches the pass on the move, and it's a big play, and a first down for the Hawkeyes inside the Miami 30. And you've got 29 seconds left to play. Basically the same pass that he threw for the touchdown to Jasper, a little post corner gets in between the double zone. Pumps it, throws it, and out of bounds. They killed the clock, tied in Matt Whitaker, making the catch. Academic. They're simply playing out the string now and learning as they go. Because you have only 23 seconds to play in the ball game. The issue has been resolved. Hartley's pass off the hands of Whitaker. I mean, right there. Dropped like a feather, right on his hands, and pounding along, the big tight end could not reel it in. Well, we mentioned the tough times that uh, I was facing. Here you take a look at it. They played NC State, who was in the Peach Bowl last year. They lost that game. They're playing Miami, who was in the Orange Bowl. Next week is their arch rival. Colorado is next week, who was in the Blockbuster Bowl. And then Michigan is their fifth game of the year. And they were in the Rose Bowl. So if they can come out of that with two or three wins, after losing the first two, they'd be doing very well. Cross the tight end gets the uh, drop off pass from Hartley as he was trying to find anything he could find and uh, there's a penalty flag thrown in the area where Cross caught the ball. And your clock now shows 13 seconds. It'll be interesting next week as far as I'm concerned to see uh, uh, this Syracuse ball club because we saw them last year a couple of times and looked pretty good. 
Yeah, and I'm looking forward to seeing Texas. Uh, you know, they, they haven't been known for their drop back passing, and uh, Makovic goes down there, who's been known for that. Ineligible man downfield. They lose the down. They're looking now at fourth down, and uh, as they go up to the line, this could be the last play. 13 seconds. Receiver downfield. Also, lost the down. So it's fourth down. The last chance for the Hawkeyes to put another point or so on the board. Hartley wants to go to the end zone, does go to the end zone, goes too far beyond the field of play. The pass is incomplete. Now Miami will have to snap the ball one time, and the game will be history. Jack? Well, Keith, I've heard of all kinds of off-campus jobs during the summer. You know, most football players, they work in construction or they do something of that nature. Well, the center here, Devlin, for the Iowa Hawkeyes, listen to what he does for the last three summers. He grinds hamburg at a local supermarket. He likes to consider himself, as he told me, a third-year meat apprentice. I'll tell you what, he's been grinding some hamburg out there tonight, too. He's going to be a butcher when these playing days are over. And knowing Mike, he'll probably own it. One more snap, and that'll do it. Miami Hurricanes 24, the Iowa Hawkeyes 7. Frank Costa will take the final snap. He will hand it off to Daniel Ferguson. Ferguson is still going. And finally out of bounds, the ball game is over. And there's your final score. 24 to 7, and the Hurricanes are off and running one more time. All the disaster and despair in the world. Gino Toretta walking there, the MVP for the Miami Hurricanes, 31 of 51, 433 yards. Jim Hartley for the Iowa Hawkeyes, 26 of 38, 266 in the touchdown. Chevrolet donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund, rewarding outstanding students for academic achievements and helping those in financial need. And so the Hurricanes are blowing again. If they're coming your way, duck. We'll be at 11.30 a.m.